amongst your many claims to fame, you're a pretty experienced head teacher. Could you tell me just a bit about your recent career, so we've got a picture of, of you. I'm the executive head of a large um, secondary multicultural comprehensive school in West London, um, and I've been uh, the head there for uh, about 10 years, and previously having been a head elsewhere, and also having worked in the school uh, formerly as a deputy. Um, and grown up in the area as well, so it's a, uh, it's not just a school that I know well; it's a, it's an area that I know well. We've had ten or fifteen years now of, of national developments in building school leadership, and, and I think probably it's as true now as it ever was that the cohesion and coherence and sense of purpose of a leadership team is probably the most important determining factor in the development of, of a school. So, could I ask you to reflect? Uh, on your recent experience in this area and, and, and highlight what you think is important in school leadership. Leadership for me is about, is fundamentally about developing other people um, and the most successful leadership uh, that I think um, uh, for me is, is, is distributed leadership. It's about empowering other people um, so that they um, are secondary centres of, um, of leadership of passion, of creativity, of all the things that are required to make the ethos of a school work in the benefit of, for the benefit of the pupils. Teams are not naturally cohesive and that requires a, a good deal of work. Um, and I think the, the, the fundamental starting point uh, is um, creating opportunities for the team to explore themselves, who they are, what their strengths are, what their characteristics are, what their weaknesses and areas for development are, and uh, to do that not only for themselves but also with other members of the team so that you can start to see as a team how you would synthesize together uh, how uh, some members of the team, um, you know, instead of uh, taking an approach of criticizing uh, weaknesses, um, can see what their role is in terms of supporting, developing, um, and um, fill in the gaps in. I want to get deeper into that. What's the substance of all that practice? Okay, first of all in our team you would never work in isolation. We don't have a, uh, a situation where you are responsible for a particular element of uh, the function of the school and, uh, uh, and you get on with that. We work at least in trios, or generally speaking we work in trios. So you would be working closely on a particular um, area of responsibility with two other people uh, who, um, and, and careful consideration would be given to um, the dynamics of that trio and uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the individuals within it to try and create a team that is as effective as possible. We're quite a large team and uh, we meet together for a formal strategic meeting uh, after school once a week on a Monday when there's no other commitments within the school. Um, but we also meet um, uh, in, uh, you know, before school twice a week um, on the basis of whoever is available uh, in what we call keep in touch meetings where it's an opportunity just to share uh, what is going on if you uh, need help from other members of the team, maybe issues that you'd like to get a sounding from other people outside your trio, um, then you would take those issues to those early morning meetings. Um, but in addition to that, it's all the informal um, uh, connections between us. We work in a single open plan area, head, deputies, assistant head teachers, um, the sort of uh, most senior support staff and the key administrators within the school all work in an open plan area together. And what that does is that aids transparency and communication of the leadership and management uh, within the school. It provides a uh, a point of easy access for uh, for middle managers, for staff, for students um, and uh, I think aids that communication and the informality because working together in a, in a large space um, uh, allows you to focus on you know the professional work that uh, that needs to be done but also to to um, constantly build those very important uh, um, interpersonal relations uh, with a much wider uh, range of people than perhaps would be the case if people were working in offices uh, on their own in isolation. The senior management team shouldn't be a secret society yes. uh, and, and that what you've got with an open office is a way of making the operations of that team accessible and visible and it kind of gives it a bit more reach as it's happening. That's really striking.
The danger in always is, is, is ignorance and the better you get to know people, the more effective you are likely to be as a team. Can we just go back to the trios a minute? How, how does all that work? We currently work, uh, and this is through experience, uh, predominantly in two trios um, and are attached to a third. And, uh, but you don't, so your main body of work will be in two, two broad areas of responsibility, whether that be, it might be HR, it might be um, data, um, but uh, you'll work closely and, and fundamentally on two areas. And then as an external evaluator um, for a third area, you'll be on call to, um, to sometimes just look at the work that the, uh, the other trio has been doing and uh, give an external perspective and to ask questions and to coach the trio to make sure the quality of their work um, is as high as it can possibly be. So we're cons you know, we are looking and we've, we've done a lot of work as a team um, to, um, to not just look at our own skills um, and our own weaknesses and what we might need to, to compensate for those, um, but also to to tackle the, uh, the issue of constructive criticism, what that really means. Um, and uh, uh, so I think we have, through working in trios and through the, 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 the professional development that we've done, um, created an atmosphere where our members of the team are actively looking for people to, um, to criticise whatever plans they've developed in order to make sure they are the highest quality plan and that they've got the perspective of somebody maybe has a different mindset. Okay, and then I guess it's obvious to say that the trios themselves work with middle managers and, and rank and file staff as well. Yes, and we're trying to encourage trio working elsewhere in the school and also um, for trios to work with other middle managers so that they get experience of the benefits of not working in isolation, um, you know, of, of genuinely working as a team, uh, and that's what we need to be as a whole school. As you've no doubt discovered during your career, uh, there are frozen leadership teams where people are frightened to say boo to a goose and, uh, and wait for the head's opinion and then busily get on agreeing with it. There are other management teams that act as kind of um, uh, clearing houses uh, for information but don't do any kind of work. Uh, but you, you, you've got the trio structure and, uh, and you've got the open plan meeting, so there's a lot going on. How do you hold it together? Differently to how I held it together in the past. When I first became a head, um, I, I would probably say that uh, the situation you describe where people looking for me to tell them what needs to be done or what the parameters are and, um, and to, to be involved almost at every stage of, uh, of decision making um, was um, uh, the kind of pre-existing culture. Um, and in some respects it's a safe culture. Um, in a making a commitment to distributed leadership, to some extent, uh, and, and to a large extent, um, a head has to shift uh, their understanding of what leadership is about. And it, it, it has to really commit to the fact that leadership is about empowering other people, developing other people, um, and trusting that um, if you can uh, develop the huge uh, number of resources in terms of staffing that exists within a school, um, that, that that school will be more successful than it ever could be if you tried to maintain the reins uh, you know, of control and, uh, and, and control the decision-making uh, process. Uh, it also has the danger that, you know, um, you know, I'm quite a creative guy, I'm quite a talented guy in a, in a number of ways, but I'm not, in, I'm not as talented as in every aspect of, uh, you know, of my personality, of my professional life, as other people in the school. There are some people who are better at some things than I am. Um, and uh, there is a kind of um, reflected success if you allow those people who are you know, perhaps stunning in a particular area, or perhaps stunning in lots of areas, um, to um, contribute that to the school that you are, you are leading. Um, formal leadership though is important and you can never, in my opinion, give up formal leadership. Um, fundamentally, my role um, as executive head is to uh, ensure that we um, we are true to uh, our, um, our our vision and direction. That we that in whatever we do, we don't veer off the course of um, of 
maintaining within the school the values that we've spent a lot of time developing, a lot of time talking about and agree that we've committed to. Um, by working with the trios in terms of coaching those trios in you know, what are the areas that are going to be the priorities for this year. Not necessarily for me to tell them to, what they're going to be, um, although sometimes that of course is necessary, um, but uh, more to, to coax out of the trio what they think the priorities should be, why they're the priorities, what are the issues that, um, that, that they're going to ha face. You know, what are the you know how are they going to actually implement whatever the plans for that particular area are, and what are the outcomes going to be because you know um, again it is uh, it is fundamental to my role to make sure that however we do what we're doing that the outcomes for students um, are achieved.